Everyone and their cat seems to be talking about DeepSeek these days. So it's no surprise you were excited to give it a try. But before you dive in too deep, you should know what you agreed to when signing up. This video might just be an eye-opener. You may even decide to delete the DeepSeek app from your phone and never touch it again. First off, what's all the hype about DeepSeek? Is it really as amazing as people claim? I've always been very suspicious of anything coming from China that requires an internet connection. As you probably know, TikTok is essentially a keylogger, sending everything you type to Chinese servers. They carefully collect our data and probably not just for marketing purposes. Then we had the Chinese-made TP-Link routers, which have massive security flaws making them easy targets for hackers which is scary considering that 65% of all router sales in the US last year were made by TP-Link. Back to DeepSeek, it's also Chinese, and surprise surprise, it collects your data including, let me open their privacy policy, okay, here we go, we collect your text or audio input, prompt, uploaded files, feedback, chat history, or other content that you provide to our model and services. But it doesn't stop here. It also collects information from your device, such as your IP address, UIDs, cookies, device and network connection information, including your device model, operating system, keystroke patterns or rhythms, yeah, and here is the IP address, system language, and so on and so on. And where is all this information stored? When you signed up, DeepSeek made you accept their terms of use. You probably didn't read the fine print, but here's something you may have not noticed. So we store the information we collect in secure servers located in the People's Republic of China. So all your keystrokes audio inputs, device models, IP addresses, and more are now stored somewhere on a Chinese server. I don't know about you, but I'm not okay with that. Sure, Western companies like OpenAI and Google also collect our data, but they don't store it on servers in China. And let's not forget that China's government has authority over its private sector, including companies like DeepSeek. We also have no insight into the security of their servers, whether the data is encrypted or what measures are in place to prevent unauthorized access. All in all, I think I'll just stick with good old US-based AI companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. Even if DeepSeek were vastly superior to ChatGPT and Claude, I'd still refrain from using it. My personal litmus test for AI tools is the simplest task in programming, writing a for loop in C++. I'll start with ChatGPT. Show me an example of a for loop in C++. Here's the code it generated. At first glance, everything seems fine, but it contains a subtle yet critical mistake you might overlook. This insidious error can lead to failed job interviews and, when left unnoticed in production code, can cause serious performance issues. Now, let's try the same prompt with Claude. Show me an example of a for loop in C++. Again, the same mistake appears. The issue lies in the use of the postfix operator instead of the prefix operator for incrementing the loop counter. Here's why this matters. The postfix operator does not return the incremented value immediately. Instead, it creates a copy of the iterator's current value increments the iterator, and then returns the old value. In most cases, this extra work is completely unnecessary because the old value is never used, just like in our example. In contrast, the prefix operator simply increments the iterator and returns the new value directly, 
no temporary copy, no wasted effort. I've made a video where I dive deeper into this topic. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the link in the description below. Now, let's see how the Chinese AI model performs. Can DeepSeek handle this simple task better than its Western rivals? Now, this is my very first time using DeepSeek. First impressions, well, the UI looks clean. Access is free, nice. Let me start. I'll reuse the same prompt. Show me an example of a for loop in C++. Hmm, same mistake. The code uses the postfix operator. DeepSeek claims they hired the brightest minds to build this model. While that strategy might have helped them cut costs, their model made the same basic error as its Western counterparts. Now, I still explore how it performs with more complex programming challenges, but so far I'm not impressed. I don't want you to simply just believe me when I say that Chinese software should not be trusted. Today I'm going to prove it to you. Ready? Brace yourself for impact. I'm going to show you exactly what happens behind the scenes when you use DeepSeek. And to keep things fair, we'll compare it with ChatGPT. I'm using Fiddler, a web traffic monitoring tool that lets us see every single connection your browser makes. Think of it as an X-ray vision for your internet traffic. Fiddler is currently idle. Let me clear its screen. Now, its views are empty because there's no traffic yet. I've gone ahead and set up a private Chrome instance with two tabs. One with DeepSeek and one with ChatGPT. Both are waiting for my prompt. So first, let's fire up DeepSeek. I'll ask it a simple question, nothing fancy, just something like explain quantum physics to a kindergartner. So the answer generation has started. And we can see the results almost instantly. Now. Watch the traffic monitor on the right side of my screen. Wow, look at all that activity. And now it has finished. Now let me enlarge this part. See those frequent little requests? That's why DeepSeek feels snappy. It's sending lots of small packets of data. But here's where it gets interesting. There's traffic to chat.deepseek.com, obviously. And here's a red flag, pun intended, sorry. Notice these connections to hm.baidu.com. That's Baidu's analytics service, basically China's Google. Every time you enter a prompt, DeepSeek is phoning home to Baidu. Now, this connection is concerning. Why does a chat service need connection to Baidu? Now, let's try the same thing with ChatGPT. I'll use the same prompt explaining quantum physics to a kindergartner. It keeps producing the answer. Awesome. And now it stopped. Let's select all the traffic. Now see the difference, much cleaner traffic pattern, fewer connections to their own servers. We have here chatgpt.com, again, chatgpt.com, av.chatgpt.com. So the session shows traffic to chatgpt.com and ab.chatgpt.com, the chatgpt service, basically. The difference is huge compared to DeepSeek's connections. Let me put those sessions next to each other. DeepSeek session on the left and ChatGPT on the right. 
DeepSeq uses more frequent, smaller requests, while ChatGPT prefers fewer, larger requests. That's why you may perceive DeepSeq as more responsive. In reality, DeepSeq sends out smaller requests than ChatGPT, but it does so more frequently. Here's another view with the connections. DeepSeq connects to many more services. It shoots them out just like Spider-Man. A lot of requests to Baidu. Now you can see where your data goes. And you can bet it's not just collected, but also stored and analyzed. The icing on the cake? DeepSeq operates under Chinese law. That means everything you type, every conversation you have, can be accessed by Chinese authorities. No warrant required, no transparency reports, nothing. Now you might be thinking, so what? I'm just asking about the weather or basic coding questions. But here's the thing, AI chatbots learn from conversations. Your data can become part of their training set. And under Chinese law, there's no guarantee of how the data might be used, including your IP address, device type, and who knows what else. Look, I'm not saying ChatGPT is perfect. They do have their own data collection practices that we should be critical of. And yes, US companies can be compelled to share data through legal processes. However, they operate under US jurisdiction and are subject to American privacy laws and regulations, such as GDPR compliance for European users. So are the benefits of DeepSeek worth the privacy risks? The choice is yours, but now you have the facts. This isn't about fear-mongering, I just wanted to make you aware that everything you type in DeepSeek's prompt is stored on Chinese servers. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you found this investigation helpful, smash that like button and hit subscribe. Ciao!